What's poppin'? This your boy Nico. What's good, Malcolm? Yeah, you cool. I'm cool too. I'm just, I'm just here. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ay, coming in, yeah. Flex, I just wanna win. Yeah. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy Nico. I'm kicking it with my man's Malcolm W. Martin. We're here back on another episode of Ethnic Issue More, episode number eight. I apologize for the delay, the revamp. You know, I had to take some time to get my mind right. So we're back with Ethnic Issue More, episode eight, with the lovely Brandy Yates as we're going to discuss her brand, Conquer Relationships, and going to the sub-brand, I Am Goals, baby. So, stay tuned, sit back, kick with me and my new brother here, Malcolm. Malcolm Martin, Martin, Malcolm. Sound like white man, black man, you never know. And what I look like, you look like a Caucasian man with good hair. Anywho, just come rock with us, we're we going to have y'all entertained for the whole day. I'll holla at you. All right, so one of our first topics tonight, going down on September 14th, the wonderful Black Panther, Miss Angela Davis, is being inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Now, I wasn't alive when she was back in the day, you know, fighting for our rights, dealing with the Communist Party, but hearing about, you know, the struggles and perseverance of this woman, not only being as one of the main female focal points of the Black Panther Party, but all the other illustrious things she did, I think not only is it deserving, but probably more than long overdue, for her to be in the National Women's Hall of Fame. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be televised, where it's exactly gonna be located, but you need to stay tuned and keep keep information updated so we can all watch this wonderful black queen become nationally recognized by everybody in the world. All right, so I wanna give another two shout outs to two sports figures. One is up and coming, one has been around for a while. We wanna shout out the 15 year old Coco Golf who is a new up-and-coming African-American tennis sensation. I'm sure y'all seen her go in on the Williams sister. Simple fact that a young 15-year-old black woman can not only look at the Williams sister as inspiration, but take them to propel her career and beat one of them is probably not on one of the most humbling but fascinating things for her. And I think we should just all celebrate that as black people. Another person I want to shout out is STL's very own Bradley Beal. He just won the 2018-2019 Community Assist Award in the NBA and is the first ever Washington Wizards to win it again since 2015 when their star point guard John Wall won. So big shouts out to Bradley Beal. Continue doing great. I know you're doing great things right now in the loop, but continue to do those great things in D.C. as well, my brother. All right, so we got a couple more things to discuss. I got to shake my head on this one first. We are gonna talk about Atlanta's own Young Dro, Mr. Shoulderlean himself, just got locked up. Why you ask? Because his goof ass decided to hit his woman with some banana pudding. Now at first I thought maybe he made it. She was messing up the ingredients. He just fire like, bitch you fucking up. He ain't do that. They got into an argument now, he probably was grubbing good, took the whole plate and flung it at her and hit it. Now, police was called for the disturbance. She didn't want to press charges, but I'm pretty sure they felt because they drove all the way from the precinct to pick up a nigga with banana pudding, they felt the need to bring him into jail. And then, to make it any worse, they didn't even release him. He got kept in jail because he got found out he owed like 14000 in child support. You can't be out here not paying for your kids and throwing underwhelming banana pudding at your significant other. So, Drew, I'm going to need you to do better. You was doing cool when you was with T.I. Ever since he started learning them big words, he left you out. So, Drew, make sure T.I. get you together and go back to shoulder leaning so you can stop taking banana pudding and flinging with your arm and slinging. Get it together, Drew. I'm going to have to walk. Wait, wait, wait. I got one more person to discuss. And before I even mention fully what Mr. Pretty Flacco, ASAP Rocky did, I want to read verbatim why we not rocking with him as black people. Let me pull my phone out, y'all. Because as we all know, he's locked up in Sweden right now, needing all the help he can 
from us, the same people he don't want to help at times when need to speak out on certain situations regarding us. He needs our signatures to petition to get him out of jail, hopefully. So, at the same breath, you want our help. This was the same man a few years ago when Mike Brown lost his life. Had this to say, and I quote, why? Because I'm black? That was his response to speaking on the situation. So every time something happens because I'm black, I gotta stand up. What the fuck am I, Al Sharpton now? I'm ASAP Rocky. I did not sign up to be no political activist. I don't want to talk about no fucking Ferguson and shit because I don't live over there. I live in fucking Soho and Beverly Hills. I can't relate. I'm in the studio. I'm in these fashion studios. I'm in these bitches drawers. I'm not doing anything outside of that. That's my life. Ah! And now you're doing all of that inside of a Sweden jail cell. Well, guess who's not signing your petition, Mr. Pretty Flacco? Me. Why? Because my black ass can't afford to go to Sweden. So I'm over here. I'm living in St. Louis. I'm living in Cahokia. I'm in East St. I don't know nothing about no fucking Sweden. I don't know nothing about fighting people when I got millions of dollars in bodyguards protecting me. So therefore, in conclusion, I hope you get out. But guess whose signature won't be the one to help you get out? This nigga here. Brandy, uh, how are you? Hey, hey. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Hey. I'm a little fancy. I did a little <laughs> razzle dazzle because I knew you was going to be on here today. <laughs> Check it out, try. Thank you, thank you for supporting. You're welcome. Appreciate You're welcome. it. You're welcome. Alright, so Miss Brandy, as we are here today on Ethnic Issue More, I brought you on here because you got two different brands that I've noticed, you know, on your Facebook page and we've talked about personally since I met you. One being conquering relationships, the other one is I am goals. So tell tell people a little about yourself and you know how you got to the point, what transpired you into making, you know, these two brands. Well, okay, so just to you know kind of bring it in um so cocker relationship is the the business it's the business. Okay. the brand um i am goals it's just it's the first logo or first step that's under conquering relationships okay so you know it's not really two separate things but it is my first starter that will bring everything together but um it came out of of course past experiences um my failed experiences and learned lessons that I had and then also observing, you know, a lot of other people. So, uh, family members, uh, friendships and, uh, you know, relationships and everything. So, um, it came out of that because I realized that a lot of people, we got, we have a lot of failed friendships, relationships and everything because we don't know, we don't know what to conquer, if that makes sense. That makes sense. So, it's not really like a matchmaker thing because I think somebody asked me that at one point because it kind of sounds like it to them. But what it is is that the conquering point, you have to realize where you need to start to conquer. Okay. And a lot of conquering that starts with yourself. So a lot of people don't, they don't want to do that. You know, a lot of times we have failed uh, issues with family, failed issues with friends, failed issues with relationships. What's the first thing we do? Oh, me. Besides quit, like who we, who we blame? The other person. We always blame the always other person. Blame the always. Other person. So within the conquering is my goal. I am goals. Cause we think we think we goals, right? But are you really goals? Okay. Why are you goals? So I feel like when you start to look into that and really dig deep down to see why you are goals, I feel like you'll start getting whoopings. You'll have to check yourself. Mm. And then you'll start seeing, hey, I wasn't as good as I thought I was in this particular, you know, situation. So then, you know, if you're a mature person, if you wanna, you know, start conquering those relationships, then you'll start doing the necessary work within your own self instead of pointing the finger. So that's actually dope. I, I mean, no, that's actually <laughs> okay. perfect because I mean, all the times we have discussed, I never really thought to ask you what that actually was as far as 
your, your definition of conquering relationships. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I always thought personally it had something to do with you in the actual relationship with a significant other yeah. and it's not working. Now I see that it's anything with a shit. Friendship, yeah. Yeah. situationship, relationship. Yeah. And the fact that I like that is it's focused on accountability. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. that's one thing I do notice with you and maybe this many <laughs> other females that I see on Facebook. Just, just you always put it from the perspective of, okay, we always talk about what the women go through, how they deal with. Have y'all ever looked at? Maybe you the issue with the man, yeah. and he's the one dealing and putting up with your stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's a different outlook on it, so. And I, I feel like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not like, to cut you off. Um, but I feel like um, I had to go that route again. That my past experience, you know, my issues, things, I failed at, I, I realized, a lot of women don't take it, con you know, highly from men. When you guys try to, you know, check us or tell us what we're doing wrong. So I feel like it's a part of my purpose. You know, I'm, I'm all about growing. I'm all about, again, conquering whatever you got to conquer, which a lot of that is your own self. You know, a lot of us are our own enemies. And because we're our own enemies, we tend to be other people enemies, you know. So I feel like I need to be that woman voice to try to kind of get us to, you know, get us together. Yeah. LA BB who we running with. Yeah. Two, two, three, three. I'm on ten, ten. All right, Brady. So, at what age, you know, did it kind of the light bulb click that, hey, I need to kind of hold myself accountable for certain situations in my life and not blame other people? I believe it started like um, at the age of 19, I got into church. Okay. Um, I wasn't raised in, you know, a household like that where we was in church or nothing like that. Um, so, when I got into church, um, I guess I, I got to this mindset or you know the things I started doing I got to I eventually got to this mindset where I felt like I was perfect you know I was doing everything the Bible said you know I wasn't for the most part that I knew of you know the the obvious sins or whatever I wasn't doing any of that so you know I'm like I'm good you know I would I would hear about people doing stuff and uh in the church and out the church and I'm like why you just can't do right like you know just be like me or whatever so God blessed me with a marriage, he blessed me with the house, he blessed me with the uh, car, the child, and everything. And then it's like, I, don't, I can't tell you when, but maybe a few years later after all that, like everything just went downhill. Just instantly, like I didn't see it coming. But, um, you know, I thought everything was perfect. And again, like I said, I didn't see it coming. So when it hit, it hit hard. So the divorce came, the bankruptcy came, the repos came. Me trying to figure out where me and my son finna stay, like all of that came. So uh, just from that point, it's like I, I took a step back. Like, okay, God, I did everything right. You know what's up? Like, why, why did this happen to me? I was perfect. I didn't do what such and such was doing or they was doing. Why I couldn't you know have this this American dream? So over the year, like not instantly, I didn't get the realization, of course, because that happened in 2013. I literally, as of last year, just launched my brand. But um, within that, I had to do, within those years, you know, I got into a lot of other things, you know, mentally, emotionally, I went down. Spiritually, I went down. I got into some things that wasn't, you know, great or whatever. But I hit rock bottom, basically. And so in the rebuilding of the rock bottom, God was showing me myself. And he was like, remember this? Yeah, you thought about that. You judged him for this, but guess what? You was doing that. And I just was like, well, you know, no, I didn't. But it's like over the years, he just kept showing me like, you so busy worried about what everybody else is doing and comparing it to what you're doing to the point where you took you took uh, your mind off of yourself. You, you stopped growing because you thought you arrived. So... It was basically like, you know, God was like, it's just show, he was just showing me that a lot of people do that. And that's why we, we have these issues with relationships, relationships, friendships, parenting, you know, everything. We always, we don't look at ourselves to grow. We look at, okay, I told my child to do this, that, and the other. They didn't do it. It's your fault. Well, did you explain it right to them? Like, did you, did you stop to see, did they really understand what you said? You know, how did you communicate that? You know, so. So it was more of like. A self check, self humbling oh, yeah. experience. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Like I said, rock bottom. And I, uh, I tell a lot of people now because I hit rock bottom. I tell a lot of people now, rock bottom. It's not. A, you don't see it at that moment, but it's not a bad place to be. 
because that's where you begin to start to rebuild. And you know, depending on who is around you, you know, you got to, when you start to rebuild, who's, when, depending on who's around you, when you start to rebuild, that could make or break you. True. And so I knew I didn't want to be back in that situation anymore, so I started examining who I was with. Like I couldn't blame other people for, okay, if I chose the wrong crowd or if I went the wrong places, I can't blame nobody. True. I'm grown. I got my own mind. True. I got my own goals. I got to make my own decisions. So I started, you know, choosing, making and my own business. Start feeling like life, even though it wasn't a quick process, but it slowly but surely started to come back together for it. Slowly, slowly but surely, yes. I'm on 10 again. Yeah. State your name. Big Ben Dope on Flame. I just switched the lanes. All right, so to piggyback off of you, you know, saying you were saved at 19. As far as in regards to your brand, how much did your faith play a role in preparing to, you know, go into this journey? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, um, <laughs> to be honest, my, uh, just going back off of, you know, being saved, but then the divorce, because that's really where it stemmed from, was after the divorce and all of this, you know, started coming. Um, my faith was actually really rocky. Um, I and I actually could say that I actually I felt like I lost faith. You know, I was angry at God. Um, I felt like you put me here. You know, I felt like it was again his fault. <laughs> I didn't look at you know where I played the part in this, um, in which you know just to tell everybody um, what I realized. You know, first of all, me and him never should have got married. You know, that was a line we crossed, thinking again the American dream, but you know. A lot of details to that, but uh, for, for starters, we should have never got married, you know. So I had to take accountability on that part and, you know, pick myself back up and stop blaming God and start realizing, okay, I did what I did. How do I move on from here? So I wouldn't necessarily say I went to, I went back to being the church person I was. Um, I don't do church regularly, but I knew with the emotional struggle I went through, I knew that it was nobody but God that got me out. So my faith was still there based off that point, but I just built myself up. All right, so one thing I noticed about you that's similar to me is you are an introverted person. Even though people don't believe that about me because I got this personality where You're I talk. Not. I am though, because <laughs> I don't like to be bothered. Um, it took a lot of time for me to start talking to people around here, skating ring. I'm just used to being by myself. So with that being said, it took a lot for me to finally go into doing this show. So how much did, you know, you being an introvert, you know, how long did it take you to kind of go into what you wanted to do? Um, it's still hard, actually. Like this, I feel honored that you asked me to do this because this is hard for me. Like I'm still introverted. I don't like the attention like that, you know. I like to be, whatever I do, I like to do it behind the scenes. Like I don't need no recognition, I don't need none of that. I just like to be behind the scenes. But um, I do realize by it being my brand, I have to be up in, up front and center. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, everybody know, you know, when you're building a brand or pushing your brand, you have to be the main person doing it. So, can't be behind the scenes no more. So, it, um, it made me have to try to come out of my box, out of my introverted ways to try to like, break those barriers and boundaries and uh, be up front. Again, it's hard, but you know, you gave me the opportunity for starters to go ahead and uh, get out that little introverted thing. <laughs> well, I mean, you do it, you do it good. Thank I, mean, you. I understand, cause I mean, it was nerve wracking for me, knowing this is my first time actually doing it in person, not sitting behind my computer screen. Mm -hmm. So I definitely understand. I applaud you on the step. Thank I'm you. grateful for you to come do it with me. You gotta, you gotta push out like you gotta force yourself to go talk to people and i'm yeah. like people <laughs> i gotta yeah. deal with people <laughs> that's, that's but it for, yeah but it forces you and people are dope like no no lie like i thought i was cool in my box and sometimes i still am but it's like getting out there to talk to people know people personalities know a different side of people you seeing you knowing you outside the ring you know it's a total not to say you're different but you it's a it's a total it's a different vibe okay. you know so you get to learn people personalities you can see where you fit with people and you know you never know who's gonna be that next blessing that's true you know and not and that's not that's not like fight just financial or anything that's just that's spiritual emotional that's life that's a you know word of wisdom because you you 
been, you know, you keep me up. We inbox a lot. Yeah, we do. And you keep me on my toes, so. Yeah, yeah. I know real people. You helping me get on out there. I know real people when I see them. I try to connect Thank myself you. with anybody. I feel it's real. I don't need nobody to be, you don't gotta be no type of benefit to my life for me to be cool with you. Yeah, that's right. If I feel like you're a genuine person, because mm -hmm. I know that's how I am, that's how I'm gonna move forward yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. So, one thing, a big thing about your brand is, I am goals. What is, why are you goals to yourself, and why should other people embrace and set goals for themselves to you know, be attainable? Well, just to, I guess, keep it simple, uh, I'm just give a scenario. Um, one thing about me, I feel like I am goals, you know, not to, not to brag or say not, a, you know, not to say that other people don't do this, but I feel like I am one of those who, um, there's a phrase, be the change you want to see. I feel like I am that. Um, and it, it came again from the, you know, hitting rock bottom, having to examine myself, but I feel like I am that because I don't, I don't judge people for where they're at now like I used to. I let people be who they are. You know, a lot of people come to me about their issues, and I have an issue with people being messy. I have an issue with people being super petty and negative and throwing people under the bus like that. That's a killer for me. I hate that. And so I made, I made a vow to myself that I'm gonna be that change, the change that I want to see. Like I don't, you know, I don't throw people under the bus. You know, I don't want anybody throwing me under the bus. So I yeah. treat you how I want to be treated. You know, I'm not saying that I have arrived or anything like that because I have my own faults still. I have things that I still need to grow in, but I, I guess I could say I can boast in I, I actually am the person to be the change that I want to see and not just talk about it, just to you know, sound good to you know the Making crowd. Them yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people so. say they wanna they wanna be that change or spew that because that's mm -hmm. what they hear. And then they get around a certain people, they're like a chameleon. You get around certain people and this who you is. You know, you get around that crowd, that's who you are. And I, I'm I'm the same wherever. Like I have people <laughs> um just to talk about the drinking like um i had people be like y'all don't drink y'all don't turn up oh i turn up i just don't need a bottle in my hand to do it you know what i'm saying and it's like if i want to drink i'm gonna get a drink because i want it you know not, not because everybody, else, everybody else doing it not because you feel like well this is the only way to have fun or this is the only way to do uh something so yep you gotta find a fun thing yeah. yourself yeah i like people to be different and be okay with being different that's that's one thing I want people to get with the I am goals. You gotta be okay with being different. You know, everybody wants to be accepted, if that makes sense. And so I see a lot of people, they, they go, they go, it's like they're finding where they can be accepted at. And so they change who they are so they can be accepted. It's like, no, be who you are. Like the people that's supposed to be in your life, they're gonna draw to that if you just be who you are. Now, if you don't be who you are, you're gonna attract all the wrong people and gonna find yourself lost not knowing who you are because you a chameleon. <laughs> and being what everybody else wants you to be. We live in a world of followers and that's, that's oh, yeah. a big thing. I see it in the skate world. Everybody Woo! wanna skate like somebody else. It's like, there's no more originality mm -hmm. to people anymore. So everybody just always wanna be like the next mm -hmm. instead of or not setting only, the bar. Not only that, I look at, you know, um, when you do see somebody doing something, congratulate them for where they're at. You know, don't don't compare them. You know, I, I do see a lot of that too, the comparison. It's like, let them be, even if they do kind of look like somebody else, so what? You know, how's that hurting yeah. you? Like, how is that affecting your skate style? What is that doing for you? You know, is, is that does that really break your heart to see that? Like, just let it go. Don't don't entertain the messiness, the drama. Like, People just be who you are. Still. Yeah. I agree. I see yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Like, that's not my business. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. That's what you want to do. Yeah. Just make sure you're doing it because that's what you want to yeah. do, not because somebody. If I want to skate like so and so, mm -hmm. it's not because I'm trying to follow that person. I just. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a piece of that, putting it in, and that should go on all aspects of life. And I think too, again, it goes back to, like I said, the chameleon. I think people are trying to find themselves, and it's okay to find yourself, but sometimes if you don't, again, realize you are goals, you you get lost. You start being what everybody else is to where you looking like everybody else, but you ain't looking like nothing. You know, if that That's makes deep. sense. That's so, deep. yeah, I mean, you gotta figure out why you are goals. Find your spot, find your niche, and work it. It's a word. Honestly. Don't matter who like it. And that's what You're it is. Gonna be all right. that's, a, that's a big thing. People worried about the approval 
above yourself and your self gratification for what you're doing for yeah. you. I don't care. like when I came up with the show. I didn't care if nobody watched it. It was something that was on my heart. I was like, you know what? I think this is what you need to do. It came at the right time. I've always said, I think I should be on somebody's TV. Mm -hmm. But I, it took me 10 years to really believe it. Mm -hmm. so, and you flowing. And, and once I did it, oh, I just flowing. ran with it. I yeah. appreciate that. And so one thing I always, you know, give people to, where can everybody find you? If they want to speak to you in regards to maybe they got relationship matters, they just want to a second opinion mm -hmm. or where can people look up you know the I am goals merchandise and all of that mm -hmm. um I don't know if you are able to like tag it you know when you post your video or whatever but um mm -hmm. so my personal page is Brandy Yates um the my business page is conquering relationships my website is www.brandyyates.com and then my Instagram I have both I have my personal uh Instagram Brandy uh YTS and you can actually get to my business page, Conquering Relationships, on Instagram from there. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, Brandy, I greatly appreciate you coming out. Thank uh, you for you having did, me. You did wonderful. I know you was nervous. I but am nervous. It turned out great. <laughs> I am. And, you know, hopefully, I think we'll see your brand in stores years down the road. And I, I successfully, I talked about it with other people. I'm like, I think this is dope. And I. And you know what, and I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I've had, I went to a fashion show, and when I tell you, I had people, somebody walked in there with my shirt, didn't even know they would be there that night, but they walked in with my shirt on, and then I had a couple of the people came to me, they were like, you the I Am Goals girl. I'm like, uh, yeah, and they were like, yeah, I follow you on Facebook, I ain't bought a shirt yet, but I follow you, and what you're doing is dope, and I'm like, you know, just to hear that and see that, like, you... You know, you might not be making big noise right now, but people are watching. Yeah, they watching. Even if they ain't liking, sharing, comment, they watching. So continue to do you. Continue to be you. Be I am goals. Be authentic. Look, you I told me. you that. Yep. I told you that. When, I, <laughs> when you gave me the shirt and let me get this, I sent you a message not too long ago. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I think this is going to take off. Me and someone else talking about that, I'm like, which is why I picked you to be the first person. I'm like, I know you. And I'm like, I feel like this is the plug to kind of get you jump started to like hey it's time and i i, I can see it I years down the road where it's going from shirts to dresses to, to the point where you ain't even got to put the label the logo on there no more it's on the top okay so we're gonna make it happen all right i appreciate it i receive it i receive it i appreciate you thank you i appreciate everybody who tuned in thus far through the episode we had our wonderful wonderful guest brandy yates as we talked about her business, conquering relationships, and her wonderful brand, as you see, I Am Goals. So we're going to continue to keep this pushing, keep this thriving. I know y'all been waiting on these episodes to keep, keep coming back to back. I'm back. Like, I never left, and I'm here to stay forever. So I'll catch y'all again. Next week, we'll have episode nine of Ethnic Issue More with my wonderful guest named Melanie Marie as we talk about the immense immense thing she got her hands in in the St. Louis area. I holla. Up up the action. I'm active. If he never heard of Ben Dope, he just napping. Jackson's off the rapping. Keep it on my body. I'm broke if you ask it. Don't gotta sell him. Most of y'all is flawless. Broken whistles longer than this foreign. Hurt